Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to continue building the ultimate tsunami survival boat capable of withstanding the worst of the worst tsunamis and storms this game brings on. Let's get started here. Today we're going to be adding engines to this boat. Let's bring in the workbench and let's get started here. All right, so this is a boat so far. Yesterday we did some customizations with the bathroom, some interior design. This is honestly looking very nice and luxury in here as always. And back here, this is where we're going to put the engines. So I don't know if we should have one or two engines, but we're going to put modular engines. So they're going to be custom some engines i'm going to be building honestly a perfect amount of room so let's go ahead get a modular engine thing here uh crankshaft so you want a crankshaft in the engine this is like what spins i think i honestly have no idea i just know how to like build a modular engine you know three we could have like six cylinders in each engine that sounds good enough let's put another one there and put a block underneath so we can have some support just to keep it up for now i'm just trying to make three there we go and then we need cylinders so how many cylinders do you guys think we should have i think Six. Um, oh yeah, I should turn on symmetry. That'd be way easier to be doing this. All right, we're gonna have six engines or six cylinders. Sorry. So technically twelve in total. Yeah, two separate engines just in case one fails and all that fun stuff. But we're actually gonna have backup motors somewhere. At the end of this, if I can actually fit more cylinders, we will definitely put more cylinders because I want all the power we can have. Yeah. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab a clutch. So modular engine clutch and put that on both. You would need this for the engines. And then we're gonna go grab some air manifolds. So I don't know where exactly we should put air at or where we should connect the air intake i'm thinking like on the top up here because we want it at a high point so the tsunami does not cover it that's the last thing we want water covering the engine so we can't drive that would be absolutely a terrible death but here we go let's put air right here actually we're gonna do it on the sides here so air's gonna go aiming that way we can line some piping all across here in the walls and probably lead up to the front or just lead up to right here. I think that actually works, just lining it up right there. And then we need some fuel, of course. So let's get a fuel manifold. I don't know where we should put our fuel tanks at, because they need to be somewhere where they can't get damage. Um, we're going to do actual tanks for the fuel, I think. So what we're going to do now is actually add a supercharger slash turbocharger on this thing. So we're going to do this. You need an impeller pump. And then we need RPS on this side, fluid in on here. So fluid in is where we're going to get the air from. So let's go ahead and make some piping towards where we want the air so up uh, is obviously where we're gonna get the air it's not gonna be down but yeah here we go we can line it up like that and then probably let's see we probably want to put it at an angle here because there's some angling going on so like this there we go perfect we'll put that pipe there and then we gotta delete this red block right here and this is where we get the air from fluid port there we go that's where we get air from it is a little low but i think this thing will definitely not go underwater so we're gonna have to delete this port here uh, there is like a default in-game uh, filter we can use. We're probably going to have to use that, but we're going to use an enclosed pipe here so there isn't any water going through because it would instantly flood. Here we go. We got an air filter here. It looks a little weird, but it will work. That's why I use the ports because the ports look a little better, but honestly, an air filter doesn't look too bad either. But yeah, that's what we're going to be using today for air. All right. These are now supercharged engines. So these are extra powerful engines. But yeah, we're actually going to line this up with the propeller. So the propeller is right there. We need a T-piece pipe enclosed so no water gets in, of course. There we go. All right. Um, looking good. Looking perfect. All right. We have air done. We need fuel now. So I deleted the fuel one on accident. Let's go ahead and grab another one. I don't know where we should put fuel out on this thing. That is honestly a really good question. So I kind of have an idea of what we're going to do here. We're going to have to delete that, unfortunately. Um, we're not going to have a whole lot of room under here for bilge pumps and stuff. Honestly, I was planning on actually having like an active stabilizer down here, but I don't know if we even have enough room for that now. Yeah, we're going to delete that. We're going to grab a medium tank here. All right, two tanks will be our, that will be the amount of fuel we have. So two tanks. Uh, we need to figure out a way to refuel them too, but we'll do that all later here. But yeah, there we go. We got fuel for the engine. So fuel, air, exhaust. We need exhaust now. You, you just need to list everything in your head, like what an engine needs in real life. So an engine definitely needs exhaust. So we're going to do a simple little exhaust there. Let's grab a pipe for the exhaust to go out of. I normally do exhaust as black. I forgot to col color code um, all this stuff here. So it's going to be a little weird. But yeah, maybe we can we put a port there. I don't know if we can put a port there, but we're going to try it. I don't think we can though yeah oh yeah we can we can put a port there so our exhaust is going to go right behind the propellers um this is not an eco-friendly boat as you can tell this exhaust is going straight into the ocean i am sorry honestly i don't want the exhaust like going in the air it's, it looks way better behind the boat when we're driving not in the air we're having a really nice setup right here let's go ahead and get a microcontroller so we use the ze engine controller modular engine controller here we go we're gonna have two separate ones 
We're going to put this in the computer bay right up here. I have confirmed this is a computer bay. All right, we have the ZE1. This is perfect because it can go on both sides like that. So we need to connect composite to both engines. Oh, yeah, we actually need to connect the cylinder things here. We'll do that in a second. We need to have it so these uh, cylinders here can transfer data. So let's grab a modular manifold or something, whatever it's called. Let's grab a corner manifold on each side of the engine. And then these will actually transfer the data in between the cylinders because nothing would really be transferring it. But there we go. That will transfer data that is working. And then we need air crankshaft RPS. We connect that to crankshaft RPS fuel manifold, the uh, fuel right there. Nice air manifold. There we go. Um, do we need anything else for this one on and off throttle value and starter? OK, yeah, we do actually need to add them. Um, all right. I forgot to add like the starter, the alternator and all that stuff. So we're going to have to delete that and we're going to do this. So this is a cool little thing you can use. I just click this selection grid up here. You can control click. Um, you can also like do some arrowing stuff. But here we go. We can back this up right here. We're going to move it one block back and that'll just make this perfect. Modular engine starter. Unfortunately, the engine belt we will put that on both sides. And then we need to reconnect fuel because this thing definitely needs fuel. It's going to take a lot of fuel to power this thing. This thing's going to have an absolutely powerful engine. So top of the line stuff we're building right here. Yeah, now fuel is reconnected. We have it color coded now. So let's go ahead and get an engine starter. We're going to put two of these on here just so we can really make sure this thing does start. And then we need an alternator to keep this thing running. So alternator spin and it um, collects electricity for the engine. So pretty cool stuff with this. And then we need a cooling system. So we need to cool these engines so they don't blow up. All right, so I kind of have an idea here. We're going to put it actually right here for the one cooling thing we're going to have per engine. So we're going to put a pump here to pump it obviously so this is fluid a so we're going to pump it back in i think that's how it works right yeah that is how it works so fluid a this will be the cold side so cold like that and then down here you have to make it red so this will be the hot hotter side and we're gonna have it pump that way too so fluid b like that i think nope that is actually the wrong way okay we're gonna angle it just a single other way here we go just rotate it like that connect it with a pipe which we already have that's great and this will actually pump the hot stuff into the water. And this will basically pump all the hot water into the water, I guess you can say. So then, then we need cold water. So this would be over here. We need to also connect this to the water because the ocean is a very well cooling thing. So you can actually cool the engines with the ocean water, which is really cool stuff. But yeah, I don't know where we should connect this. I think we're going to have to actually um, divert this course right here. I want it to go straight down like right here right next to it but I don't think we can do that with if it's like this so we're gonna make this thing go at a little bit of an angle here we need to just divert the pipes course let's do that real quick here we go grab another straight pipe and straight like that all right now that it's at a different angle we want this actually turning the other way so we're gonna rotate that rotate it again and then we're gonna have a drive straight down back into the ocean and this should be a really well cooling method. And I did not do that on symmetry. All right, now that I did it on symmetry, everything's looking good. This should cool the engine quite well. We have to go down here. It is um one of the angle things, so it's not that good. Um, I don't know if we should have the hot water one in front of this port. I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't affect it too much. I don't know if the game has like realistic stuff like that, if you guys know what I mean. But there we go. Cooling should be done here. So let's go on the helm and actually make some buttons because that's the stuff we're waiting on right now. So where should our button be to start this? I'm thinking like thinking like right here, we could have the starter or the key button to like start it. You guys know, and then we'll put that there. We need a throttle too to control the engine speed. So we're gonna put that right here. This is a perfect spot to put it, I feel like. So right next to the helm. And then we need a RPS and temperature display dial here. And we also need a speed one. So we're just going to grab three dials here. Delete all that. Put a dial. Swap, swap, swap. Dial, dial, dial. Three dials. And we need a linear speed sensor. This linear speed sensor will detect our speed. We're going to connect that to this one right here. So this is going to be speed. Uh, I don't know what kind of measurement it's in. It might be like meters per second, I think. I forgot we have two engines. So we probably have to actually make this. I think we need to make these two things separate right here. And we can maybe do like, here, we'll do it on this table right here. So these will be the two engine RPMs. And then these will be the two engine temperatures. So we just know some stuff about the engine. Perfect. I got the names of those down. So engine one temp, we'll have to do that one later. Arp engine one RPS. So we'll connect that to the engine one crankshaft this is engine one because it goes from left to right on engines including planes and all that fun stuff so there we go throttle all right we have to connect this to the two microcontrollers throttle value or desired desired rps perfect perfect and i'm going to select the microcontrollers and do 
uh, air to fuel ratio instead of that because air to fuel ratio is just better and then we're going to lower the throttle value at zero so this is just like the idle rpm we don't want it to be at six that is way too high and then we're going to rise this to 25 is going to be our max rps so 25 and then um let's see if all this looks good optimize mixture at high throttle yeah let's do that this will help us or supposedly help us as it says um get a higher speed or better speed because it will change the air to fuel ratio when we're at a higher speed then we also need to connect the starters here of course so starter goes to these so i control click so i can have the logic thing go out multiple times control click on these there we go perfect and then we need to connect these fluid pumps we'll just connect that to our main engine starter which will also connect to these cooling should always be active when this thing is on key buttons that one right this is the button to start it all yes and this will also connect to these fluid pumps and the fluid pumps down here don't forget about those other fluid pumps we need to connect electric to all these engines this is a very important step here if you're trying to drive so now what we're going to do is go to a and d on this helm thing oh my gosh there's so many buttons already uh a and d so this will turn our rudders so that is so now we can turn left and right um you guys think that's it that might be it we actually need to connect electricity to the stuff in the helm because that is also very important so let's go ahead and test to see if it works i'm guessing it's not going to work because it's first try all right let's go in here activate engine and throttle oh it's working engine does work we do not have it connected to the propellers yet let's go ahead and connect it that is honestly surprising i got an engine working on the first try that is impressive um, yeah, so what's not working here is the clutch. There's nothing connected to this clutch microcontroller. Let's just do a manual clutch for this one so we can manually do it because sometimes microcontrollers do mess up your clutch stuff. This is going to be kind of a weird spot for the clutch, but we're going to put it right here, right next to all this stuff. Um, We're going to have to move our radio because our radio is definitely going to be in the way with that. So we're going to connect the clutch to this two things right there, and then we need to connect electricity to the clutch. We're going to spawn it in, see if this boat actually drives here. I'm, it will drive. We're just going to see how stable it is. Probably not going to be that stable, but once again, we have not started the stability part of it yet. So slowly enable the clutch here. There we go. We are driving. We are indeed driving. This is working already. We can turn this thing. Oh my gosh, this thing's this thing turns on a dime. Oh my gosh, I love what I did with this thing. All right, we're going 13. Let's try rising a little more. Okay, that's too much. You don't want to all the engine here even though you can't in this game i don't think so it's at 14 so around 66 is the fastest we're gonna get but i can make this thing faster i could add fuel pumps and all that fun stuff let me know if i should do that but yeah we got this engine working let me know in the comments what else should we should add to this thing but yeah we're gonna fix some stuff in the inside right now because you guys last video did say some stuff in the comments that we should do so if you guys said we should add a hatch right here to access the logic yeah so to repair like all this important stuff in the boat we're probably gonna have to go outside of the boat well we might fix this in a future video but i don't know right now this is just what we're gonna do so we'll have a hatch right there that will be the um computers hatch because logic is computers we'll just say that so computers hatch and that'll lead us down there. We also need to have a lock button on there so people can go in there and check out some of our highly classified computer stuff. But yeah, these are our engines right here. Very powerful. So some of you guys actually asked me to make like a safe. Um, I don't know if we can do like a safe with a lock on it. Um, where should we put a safe at? Where should we? I think we could put the safe like a little bit up here. So under the stairs a little bit. It's not going to be too secret, but um, this is the captain's bed right here. So the captain will have access to this stuff. So we're going to put an assault rifle completely sideways like this, and that's the wrong way. There we go. And then we need ammo for it, of course. We don't want to have no ammo. Put some ammo for the assault rifle. This actually will need a decent amount of ammo, so we'll do it like that. So right here, why don't we add like a pistol or something? Because we want these people to be armed, because these are the crew members. So if anyone does ride this thing, we want them to have weapons also. I don't want it to just be me. If everyone has weapons just in case. I will have the assault rifle. So if the Kraken or something ever does attack this thing, oh my gosh, was my rotation labels on this entire video? I'm so sorry if you could like not see what I was building. So now everyone has a weapon. Perfect. And then Tycross8189 actually asked me to put some flare guns. That was a good idea. I completely forgot. So I don't think we need all these flashlights in each and every one of these. So we're going to put a flare gun in this one. I don't think we need a whole bunch of flare guns, but we'll just put one flare gun in this dude's bed. We actually need some flare gun ammo because I don't want to run out of ammo when we're shooting a flare. If we ever do need help, which will never happen, of course. Um, this is a flare gun ammo here. We'll just put that there and then we'll put a flare gun in this other one. Yeah, so we do have flare guns in this game. That is the cool part. There we go, flares. We do have flares added, perfect. And then some of you guys asked me to add a sonar room like up here. Um, I don't know exactly how that work. What are you guys expecting from a sonar room? We're gonna have like some sonar and stuff under the boat. So here I'll show you what it will look like in the future video. It'll be like adding systems. We're gonna do that. So 
A sonar would look like this under the boat. That is a huge sonar. We're not doing that. That'd see like across the map, but a little sonar like this would actually work. And we could see pretty far with that little thing. But yeah, let me know what you were kind of expecting with the sonar stuff. But yeah, that's probably going to be it for this video. Let me know in the comments right now what I should add to this thing, because I know you guys have some pretty good ideas. Actually, the majority of things I add in this thing are from what you guys put in the comments. Go and look at this flare gun. So we have a flare gun right here. Let's go shoot a single bullet outside. Shoot a flare in the air. Boom, flare is right there. It'll brighten up like that. Flares are really bright in this game, so you can see that from pretty far away. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Hit that bell. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.